Uliona yafaa utuamshe tuwe hai ukatupa nguvu na uweza wa kuingia kwenye jumba hili kwa sababu uko na jambo ungetaka tusemezane nawe ninakuomba kama mtumishi wako maneno ya kinywa changu na matarajio ya moyo wangu yaweze kukubarika kwako ili kila mmoja uliyemleta kwenye mahali hapa aweze kusaidika kwa ajili ya neno lako watu wako wanapoketi nami nibaki nimesimama naomba untumie kama chombo cha maarifa na hekma na ile familia zetu na boma zetu na jamii iweze kupata maarifa ya kuishi utakavyo na kuomba ya kwamba utanenea familia zetu utatunenea kama wazazi utatutenea kama kanisa kama na jamii na kama nchi ili tunapowalea watoto tuwalee kulingana na matarajio na mapenzi ya moyo wako naomba dakika chache nitakao ongea uzitumie kujitukuza na kufanya jina lako liheshimike na kuomba kwa heshima katika jina la Mungu Baba Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu naomba tuweze kuketi katika uwepo wa Bwana ili tuweze kuendelea namshukuru Mungu siku hii njema aliyotuandalia na kama vile tunavyoelewa vizuri sana leo ni siku ya vijana wetu wa kiume na wa kike wa brigade na kwa hivyo leo tunalo fundisho leo ni fundisho leo sio salmon leo ni fundisho naomba leo tuongee mambo ya parenting mambo ya malezi na shukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya mtu aliye na mahali pa kuandika na kitu ya kuandika I value writing mimi huheshimu kuandika sana kwa hivyo neno letu ama somo tulilonalo siku ya leo ni juu ya malezi parenting asitatumia muda mwingi vile naamini ya kwamba muda mchache nilio nao utatumika kwa manufaa ya Mungu na manufaa ya familia zetu neno linalo tuongoza siku ya leo limetolewa kwenye kitabu cha Mithari 29 na mstari wa 15 unaosema ya kwamba fimbo na mawaidha hutia mtoto hekma naomba nirudie lile neno tena fimbo na mawaidha humtia mtoto hekma lakini mtoto aliyeachiliwa asiye na tabia huaibisha mamake Neno la mwongozo midhali 29 mstali wa 15 Fimbo na mawaidha humtia mtoto hekma lakini mtoto asiye na tabia mtoto aliyeachiliwa ajitawale huaibisha mama yake The future of a generation kwa wale ambao wanaandika kwa lugha ya Kiingereza The future of a generation is determined by how children are parented. Kesho ya kizazi, kesho ya familia. Kesho ya nchi, kesho ya mji na jamii yetu ni vile watoto wanavyolelewa. Tukiwalea watoto ambao wana tabia ni kizazi uh, cha kesho kitakuwa na tabia Tukiwalea watoto ambao wamepotoka hawana mwelekeo, hawana heshima, hawana mila, ni kizazi chetu cha kesho tunacho kibomoa na kukiharibu. Our future as a family is our children. Kesho ya familia ni mtoto ama watoto walioitanishwa na ile familia. Kwa wale ambao ni wasomi wa gazeti naomba ni quote gazeti ya Jumatatu The People's Daily Monday the August 6th. Kunaye mwandishi alisema ya kwamba tunawalea watoto wasio na tabia. We are bringing up a generation of very indisciplined children. Hiyo ni gazeti ya Jumatatu The People's Daily. Na mwandishi anaendelea kusema ya kwamba walimu na wazazi wameshindwa na malezi. Parents and teachers have given up on parenting. Mwandishi aliendelea kusema ya kwamba katika boma nyingi mambo ya tabia haiko kabisa. 
In many homes, parenting and discipline is a vacuum. Tumeachilia watoto wajitawale. Wajitawale vile ambavyo watakavyofanya mambo, wajitawale kwenye mambo ya mavazi, wajitawale kwenye mambo ya heshima, wajitawale kwa vile maisha itakavyoendelezwa. Wazazi tulio nao kwenye kikao hiki tunawalea watoto nyakati ambazo zimejaa hatari. We are parenting children in times of great danger. Kizazi tunachokilea wakati huu wazazi ni wakati ulio na hatari kuu. Na ningetaka niseme changamoto saba ambazo kila mzazi wa kizazi hiki anakumbana nacho. Anakumbana nazo. Seven challenges of today's parenting. Changamoto ya kwanza ambao wazazi tunakumbana nayo is economic and financial pleasure. Tumesukumwa sana mambo ya kifedha. Wazazi tulio nao kwenye jumba hili wataniambia ni ukweli mwinjilisti ya kwamba one job is no longer enough for parenting. Job moja tu haitoshi. Mambo ya, ya, ya house rent, mambo ya shule kule, malipo ya shule, kila kitu galama ya maisha imeenda zaidi ya uwezo wa kila mkenya. Changamoto ya pili ambao kila mzazi anayoipitia is economic democratic space and human rights. Watoto ambao tunaolea wanajua rights zao. Kuna watoto siku hizi utachapa ujipate kotini ama ujipate jela kwa sababu ya democratic space ya human rights. Watoto wameendelea kujijua na kujielewa na wale ambao wanafundisha mambo ya human rights wameendelea kuongeza nafasi ya rights za watoto. Changamoto ya tatu ambayo tunakumbana nayo kizazi cha karne ya 21 is increased urbanization and westernization. Tunawalea watoto wazungu. Watoto ambao hawajui kukosa ni nini. Watoto ambao wananyimwa hamsini ya kwenda broad lie wanachukua kamba wakajinyonge. Watoto ambao wananyimwa simu wako tayari kuvuluga amani ya familia na amani ya nchi urbanization and westernization utakuta tunanunulia watoto iPads na simu za bei ya kari ya juu sana na katika zile simu na mambo ya westernization watoto wanaanzana na picha za ngono na mambo ya dawa za kulevia wakiwa na umri ambao ni mchanga sana na ningetaka kuambia waafrika wote walioko kwenye kanisa hili Tutakuwa wa Afrika leo na kesho sisi ni wa Afrika. Tunaweza leo watoto wa kizungu lakini damu yao ni damu ya Kiafrika na mwachamila ni mtumwa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Wakati ninaposema mambo ya westernization, tunawalea watoto ambao virginity ni aibu kufunga miguu mpaka siku ya ndoa ni kama jambo la aibu kwenye kizazi tunachokilea mtoto mchanga aliyezaa Kenya hii wiki mbili zilizopita alikuwa msichana wa miaka tisa. Nine year old girl two weeks ago i think jambo la nne changamoto ya nne ambayo tunakumbana nayo wazazi wa karne ya na moja ni changamoto ya madawa ya kulevia drugs and substance abuse watoto wetu wameingilia madawa wakiwa umri ambao ni mchanga sana wengine wanatazama baba zao wengine wameingizwa na watoto wenzao our children are getting into drugs at a very alarming 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 stage Changamoto ya tano ambayo tunayokumbana nayo kama wazazi ni kuwalea watoto ambao naita individual children. Huyu ni mtoto wangu achana naye. Akikosa tabia we achana naye ni wangu. Private children. Wakati sisi ambao ni wazee kidogo tulikuwa tunalelewa mtoto alikuwa wa jamii mzima. Mtulika ya mama yako alikuwa mamako. Mtulika ya babako alikuwa ni babako. Lakini watoto tunaolea ni wangu. This is my son. Akiwa indisciplined mwache. Huyu ni mtoto wangu. Hawezi pewa 
tabia nyumbani, hawezi pewa tabia shule, hawezi pewa tabia kwenye jamii. Watoto ambao hawana mila na hawana kizazi ambacho wanachoiga na kusoma kutoka kwake. Changamoto ya sita ambayo tunayokumbana nayo kama wazazi exchanging world views. Maisha imeendelea ikigeuka. Vile ambavyo kulikuwa na traditional view of life tumeendelea kuondoka kwenye mambo ya kimila na mambo ya itikadi yetu kama wa Afrika. Na ninaposema hivyo ni vizuri kila mzazi ajue the family is no longer an authority in the lives of the children. Familia imetupa sauti. Watoto wetu wanalelewa na simu, wanalelewa na TV, wanalelewa na pia pressure huko nje. Familia imepoteza msingi wa kule kulea watoto na kuwaonyesha njia inayofaa tabia na mwelekeo wa maisha haya. Changamoto ya saba ambayo tunakumbana nayo is domestic violence and insecurity. Boma nyingi zimejaa vita na matusi na kudharauliana. Wengine tunapigana watoto wakitazama, watoto wakiangalia. There is a lot of insecurities in our homes. Unasikia ya kwamba baba mwenye familia ameshtuka siku moja, amemchinja mke, amechinja watoto wanne na watano. Our children are no longer saved even in the hearts of the uncles and aunties. Hatuko nyakati ambazo mtoto angeachiwa baba ama achiwe watu wa familia. There is a lot of insecurity in the land. Na ningetaka niseme ya kwamba the origin of parenting is God kwa wale ambao wanaandika. Msingi na chanzo cha malezi ni Mwenyezi Mungu. Katika ombi lile ambalo tunalo lioba la baba yetu, tunasema baba yetu ulia mbinguni. And therefore God is the foundation of parenting. Mungu ndiye chanzo cha kuigwa na kutazamwa ikifika nyakati za ulezi. Na kwa hivyo hakuna mzazi ambaye atawezana na malezi asipoungana na Mungu katika malezi. There is no parenting outside God. Msazi lazima afuate vile ambavyo Mungu ameamlisha. Ikifika nyakati za kulea na kuongoza kizazi na watoto ambao tuliobarikiwa nao na Mungu. Na ningetaka niseme hivi kwa wale ambao wanaandika. You can mother and never be a parent. Kwa wale ambao wanaandika pia you can father and never be a parent. Inawezekana uzarishe ama uzarishwe. Lakini usiwahi kuwa na kusimama wima katika jukumu na mambo yale ambayo hupelekana na mzazi. Many women mothered but they have never parented their children. Many men fathered but they have never parented their children. Na utakuta katika maisha ambayo tuko naye ya kwamba baba pasipo kuzalisha hawana jukumu zingine. Utampata visiting ya mtoto, utamkuta nyumbani akiwa akipea watoto mawaidha, you only father, but you've never been a parent to the young men and the young women that you fathered in that home. Na kwa hivyo tunapoongea siku ya leo, ningetaka niseme na wazazi tulio nao. Was, watoto ambao tunawalea hawahitaji nyumba ya kifahali. They don't require a parishio house, they require a father and a mother. Wana Yesu asifiwe. Watoto tunaolea hawahitaji gari la familia, wanahitaji baba. Heri watoto walale nyumba ya kimaskini, lakini wako na baba wa kuwaongeresha na kuwaonyesha njia za maisha haya. Praise the name of the Lord. Na ningetaka ninenee wazazi wote wa Afrika. Watoto wetu hawahitaji mamilioni kwa benki. Don't invest for your children. Invest in the lives of your children. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa sababu naongeresha wazazi ambao wamepotelea kazini, wamepotelea kwenye biashara, wamepotelea wamerudi shule kwa sababu wanatafuta degree na ingine. Masomo ni mzuri, but your children do not require an educated mother. They require a mother whom they can be attached to. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Saidia kusalimia mzazi karibu na wewe mwambie ni wewe unaambiwa. Tatu tafadhali mwambie ni wewe. Ni wewe unaambiwa, ni wewe unaambiwa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kuna wazazi ambao wanapenda mali yao kuliko watoto. 
Kuna wazazi ambao waliachiliwa wasichana wa kazi ndio mama ndio baba wa mtoto kwa sababu mama na baba hawapatikani. May I ask all parents go back home. Your children don't require well. They require a mother and a father they can see at home. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Utakuta wanaume wengi hata wakienda visiting kule high school anayedanga na gazeti. Siku gani mtoto akala gazeti lako? Akujanga na gazeti wamesimama, hana soda, hana kanyama, hana lolote, dakika tano na mtoto hawana ajada ya kuongea and he is the father. Haki ya Mungu lazima tugeuze mambo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Saidia mwanaume aliye karibu naye hapo msalimie muambiwe ni wewe unakatwa ni wewe wewe unakatwa It is the divine duty kwa wale ambao wanaoandika kwa lugha ya Kiingereza alafu tutafsiri It is the divine duty of every parent to discipline their child or their children Ni jukumu la kiungu kwa kila mzazi ampe mtoto ama watoto wake tabia Shule haiwezi kupea mtoto wako tabia. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sio jukumu la mwalimu ama jamii kumpea mtoto wako tabia. It is the divine duty of every father and mother to discipline their child all their children. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Familia nyingi zimeachia walimu mambo ya kulea na mambo ya kuweka watoto tabia. Lakini Mungu anatukumbusha siku ya leo. Na diposa mstari wa 15 ukasema ya kwamba mtoto asipopewa tabia na mamake ama babake atakuwa aibu kwao. Sio aibu kwa shule, sio aibu kwa kanisa. The child will embarrass the parent. Na kwa hivyo leo siku ya leo tunayo changamoto ya kusema ya kwamba na, na, na sijui kama wa Kenya ni vizuri waambiwe vile. Tulipoteza kiboko na Biblia haiongei mambo ya kiboko Biblia inaongea mambo ya fimbo Fimbo kwa Kiingereza ni club Ile theory Ya kwamba tulipopoteza kiboko na tukapoteza fimbo Democracy will never be the voice of God Naomba nirudie lile jambo wazazi tuelewane Democracy is never the voice of God Bwana nikasema hivyo Ukisoma kumbukumbu la Tolati 30 mstari wa 15 Mungu kama baba yetu anatuambia sisi wanawake naweka uhai na kifo mbele yako chagua utakalo If God was a democratic God hange tupea choices za kuchagua kwenye maisha haya Tunawalea watoto ambao wako na freedom ya kuchagua kama watatii ama hawatatii Ikiwa Mungu die chanzo cha malezi then we must bring back the kenning the spanking ili watoto wanapoona fimbo na kuionja waelewe ya kwamba maisha haina uhuru ni either uwe mtoto mwema ama upotoke na ubebe mazao ya kule kupotoka kwako bwana yesu asifiwe bwana yesu asifiwe wakati tulipokuwa tunaongea katika ibada ya kiingereza Niliwakumbusha wazazi wote ambao tulikuwa nao maisha ya wazazi waliotulea especially my mother. Shukuru ni Mungu hamkulelewa na mamangu. Mamangu ni mwanamke wa Nyeri, a typical Nyerian woman. Mamangu alilea watoto kumi hakuna hata mmoja alifanya alale pasipo amani. Na wewe mtoto mmoja pressure inaenda juu. Macho ya mamangu pekee mlielewa vile anavyotaka macho pekee Bwana Yesu asifiwe Tukienda kwenye harusi unamwangalia uso unaelewa kama tunakula hii harusi ama tunaenda nyumbani njaa Bwana Yesu asifiwe Wakati sisi tulipokuwa tunalelewa mamangu akiongea na wanawake wengine hapo huku hitaji ku Watu wazima wakiongea ni ujikate. Haukuhitaji kuelewa kutoka kwa mamangu. Kizazi tunachokilea watu wawili watatu wazima wakiongea pia mtoto ni pati ya agenda na kuongeza mawaidha kwenye ile debate. 
Wakati sisi tulipolikuwa tunalelewa, wageni wangeingia. Haukuhitaji kuambiwa ya kwamba zima TV watu wazima wanaendelea. Watoto mnaolea hata wageni wakiingia wanaongeza volume ya TV, wageni mtoe mtoe upuzi kwenye nyumba, watoto wanahitaji kuangalia TV yao. Siku nyingine tulienda na mchungaji kutembelea familia. Tukambia watoto zimeni kipindi ambayo inaonwa saa mbili ya katika uh, uh, TV fulani inaonwa saa mbili na aibu ni ya kwamba inaonwa na baba inaonwa na mama inaonwa na watoto pia ambaye ananyonya pia anaangalia hiyo kipindi Tulipomaliza kusoma neno tunauliza watoto zimeni TV tuombe watoto waliamua kuondoa tu volume ili sisi tukiongea na Mungu wao wanaendelea na kipindi yao Nilipoenda pale kwenye uh, kwenye ukuta nikaizima hawa watoto walisimama kama wanaume and they marched to their bedroom Kizazi ambacho kimepotoka Kizazi ambacho tabia itikadi na mira zao sio za kuheshimiwa tena Biblia imetuambia ya kwamba ukimwachilia mtoto ajitawale atakuaibisha wewe aibishe na jamii We must bring back order into our parenting again. Praise the name of the Lord. Wakati mwingine natazama tusichana twenu tukine cha kanisani. Ni kama kastoto kakouchi. Na kalitoka nyumba iko na mwanaume ambaye anaweza ambia binti yake tembea uchi wewe you will be raped kwa sababu wanaume hushukuru na kile ambacho wanaona. Na ni vizuri niambie wanawake mlio hapa It is time we dress our children again like Africans because we will be Africans today and tomorrow we shall also be Africans. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na wale wanaume huona mili ya wanawake huko nje, even the father is a man and he appreciates the geography he can see in her daughter. He is also a man. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Lakini kizazi mnachokilea ni mwana wako anane ni edago lile nguo ishio evangelist leave my child alone salimia mzazi karibu na wewe muambie updated parents updated parents <laughs> mimi nashukuru Mungu wakati kulikuwa na ushirika katika kanisa letu la presbyterian walioitwa wadugu na wadada wa mzigo kwa sababu kuna mavazi hawakuachilia ivaliwe kwenye madhabahu kuna njia na mienendo walioikataa lakini siku ya leo wa Kristo wameachiliwa wajitawale. Ukisikiza wa Kristo wengine ukiwaambia mavazi hii sio ya msalaba, watakwambia wewe weka macho yako madhayo. Ni moyo imeokoka, mavazi yangu wachana nayo. Ni korowe honokaga. Lakini lakini na nitasema hivyo tukosane. Gorode honoka no mwili uhubwa tawa maraya. There is a disconnect in the two ikiwa moyo imeokoka itasaidia mwili kuokoka kwa sababu mtu huokoka kila kitu wadhani ya goshwa na nikiwa christian aigia pca ona mahoya madhia gabere ya gai komwera toka to tuletia maru magoro ni yageire maru amen pea mwenzako ka high five nitafuta hiyo point ingine Naomba kwa wale wazazi tulio nao muandike hili jambo kwa mioyo na notebook ya kwamba when a society ignores the counsel of God it never stands. Kwa wale ambao tunaoandika when a society ignores the counsel of God it never stands. Wakati jamii na taifa inadharau vile Mungu alivyoamrisha. Inadharau vile Mungu anavyokusudia. Inadharau vile Mungu amesema mambo ifanywe ile jamii na taifa huangamia. Hebu angalia Proverbs that 14 verse 34. Midhali 18 mstari wa 34. Unasema ya kwamba utakatifu huinua mji lakini dhambi hudharaulisha ule mji. Righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a disgrace to the nation. Na kwa hivyo wakenya wazazi tulio nao 
lazima turudi kwenye neno la Mungu tutazame na tuulize Mungu anatazimia anatazim, tufanye nini ili wakati tunapolea watoto Jambo lingine ambalo nahitaji liandikwe public morality halafu nitatafsiri kwa lugha ya Kiswahili public morality depends on the fear of God vile ambavyo watu wataishi vile ambavyo watu wataelekeza biashara zao za kila siku inasukumwa na uoga wao kwa Mungu kizazi tulichonacho kwa wakati huu hakina uoga wa Mungu it no longer has the fear of God na ni vizuri nikumbusha wazazi tulio nao kunao watoto wa kuhani moja kwenye biblia aliyoitwa Eli watoto wa Eli walidhalau madhabahu watoto wa Eli walidhalau Mungu naomba nikuipusha wazazi tulio nao ila siku Mungu aliamua kuua wale watoto hata baba yao ambao alikataa kuwaongoza alimuua pia ile siku as god finishes the generation he also kills the parents who have abdicated their responsibility to guide children on the right way jambo lingine ambalo nahitaji liandikwe words alone cannot discipline a people hivyo ndivyo midhali imetuambia maneno ya mdomo haiwezi weka mtu tabia that is proverbs 29 words alone cannot discipline a child hiyo si mimi nimesema and i wish mwelekezi wetu pale kwenye mitambo unaweza tutafutia mstari ambao ninaousema ya kwamba maneno ya kinywa peke yake haitaweka mtoto tabia na diposa neno likasema ya kwamba ukiweka fibo na kijiti chini mtoto hatasaidiwa na maneno ya mdomo counseling alone cannot discipline children hata kule high school wakichoma dormitory maneno ya mdomo haisaidii lazima mambo ya sheria na mambo ya kiboko iwekwe pale ili kiboko isaidiane na maneno ya mdomo ili mtoto aweze kulelewa vile ambavyo Mungu ameamulisha kufanyishwe ama mambo iweze kufanywa naomba kwa dakika tano niseme mambo mawili matatu inayohusu single parenting wazazi ambao wanalea wakiwa peke yao kwa sababu ya mambo ya maisha haya iliyowapata labda baba ya watoto akaenda labda wakaachana kwa sababu ya changamoto za maisha haya naomba tuongee mambo ya single parenting dakika mbili tatu halafu tuendelee na somo letu kwa wale ambao wanaandika kwa lugha ya kiingereza as a matter of fact single parenting is increasing at a very rapid rate and it can never be ignored again kwa mamingi wazazi wengi wameendelea kulea watoto wakiwa peke yao labda kulijia changamoto kati ya wale wazazi wawili wakaachana labda baba ya watoto alipata familia ingine ama kunayo changamoto ambazo ziliingia mtoto akajipata analea mtoto akiwa peke yake naomba niongee mambo ya challenges of single parenting changamoto ambazo wale wazazi wanalea watoto peke yao wanapitia jambo la kwanza is coping with the absence of the other party Kumlea mtoto peke yake ukujua ya kwamba baba yao yu hai. Anatembea tu mahali fulani na hana shughuli na hana mzigo wa kuangalia wale watoto ambao aliowaleta kwenye maisha haya. Na ni vizuri niseme tukiwa kwenye jumba hili ya kwamba wazazi wengi ambao wanalea peke yake yule mzazi ambaye hahusiki huamua kusumbua na huamua kufanya mambo iwe ngumu mpaka kwa huyu anayelea akiwa peke yake. Akijua ya kwamba mmemchagua kumba kuwa kiongozi akiwa kwenye yako anapiga simu ama anakuja kumpaka matope ili hata was, jamii mkatae vile alivyo mkataa pia yeye ni uongo ama sio uongo akijua ya kwamba watoto wanalelewa mahali fulani anakuja kuwakoroga akili ili mzazi aliyebaki na watoto mzigo wa kulea uwe mkubwa zaidi katika ile njia ya kulea number two, assuming additional roles Huyu mzazi anayelea peke yake ndiye mama, ndiye baba, ndiye ndiye counselor, ndiye ndiye judge, ndiye kila kitu. Na wakati mwingine asipopewa support, asipopata watu wa kusimama na yeye. Single parenting is an uphill task. Changamoto ya tatu, wa wazazi single parent wanayopitia is prejudice and societal stigma. 
jamii anayoishi haimuamini akivaa nguo safi wanasema lazima kuna sponsor kale ka biashara anafanya haiwezi nunua hiyo nguo watoto wakisoma shule nzuri jamii haimuamini inasema hawezi akiwa peke yake lazima kuwa na mwanaume ama mwanamke ambaye hatuoni anamsaidia katika kisili inaitwa stigma na pia kanisani na mtanipea ruhusa niseme hivyo pia wanakataliwa kanisani utakuta tukiingia uchaguzi wa wamama na yeye ni single parent wamama walio pale wanaulizana single parent atatuambia nini na ni vizuri tuombeane wapendwa even a single parent is a human being na ni ari hakili no gwekorea kwa leader single parent watani ya kumio muno amen unajua ukilala umeshiba una shindango wa watu ambao wamelala njaa akili ziko wapi ni ukweli ama sio ukweli ukilala umeshiba unafikirianga watu ambao hawana chakula ni akili hawana na ni vizuri tuombiane kanisani hata waba wanalea peke yao ni kipande chetu tusaidiane nao ili pia nao watoto wao walelewe wazuri kwa sababu gani mtoto mmoja akikosa the father the father figure aingia kwenye mambo ya insecurity na violence atakusumbua mpaka wewe ambaye unawalea watoto mkiwa wawili bwana yesu asifiwe bwana yesu asifiwe waacha umuone single parent na bwanako Eh? Do ataida waku wewe wako. No ugiona wewe na ni urale muone wewe. Uyakuwa yatware. Jambo ambalo lingine changamoto ya wazazi ambao wanao leo wakiwa peke yao is balancing between parenting and work. Lazima bebe jukumu za kulea na jukumu za kutafuta, jukumu za malezi, jukumu za kuongea na watoto. Na wakati mwingine hizi jukumu zote Asipopewa support na apata watu wa kumsaidia anaingia challenge ya tano feelings of self doubt self esteem and self inadequacy naomba niludie changamoto ya mwisho feelings of self doubt anaanza kutojiamini self esteem yake inaenda chini kwa sababu haaminiwi na mtu yeyote na ikiendelea anajihisi ya kwamba amefika wakati wa kukua inadequate sasa ndiyo nimalize somo letu la leo. Naomba niongee juu ya 10 principles of bringing up healthy children. Visingiti kumi ambazo tunahitaji kuzitazama na kuziwekea uzito ili tulee kizazi cha watoto ambao wana mwelekeo na wana mila na itikadi ambazo zimeheshimika. Principle number one. Na ninaomba iandikwe vile ilivyo nisije nika kwaza wengine. Principle number one, where applicable, na hiyo maneno yangaliwe vizuri, where applicable, it is very important for the parent to love and respect one another in the presence of their children. Mahali ambapo inawezekana, wazazi wote wawili, wapendane na waheshimiane, wakati wako katikati ya watoto wao. Bona nikasema hivyo, Tunaishi katika familia nyingi ambazo zimejaa madharau mama ya watoto anadharauliwa na kuchapwa mbele ya watoto baba ya watoto anatukanwa na kuwekwa uchi mbele ya, ya watoto ambao wako pale ni vizuri ya kwamba wazazi vita yenu ipelekwe huko bedroom kelele zenu zipelekwe kwenye sili watoto waone upendo na heshima bona nikasema hivyo kwa wale ambao wanaandika tuandike hivi The relationship between a husband and a wife is the foundation upon which children build their future. Kule kuheshimiana na kupendana kati ya baba na mama ndio unao msingi ule watoto ambao hujenga vile ambavyo watachukua waume zao na wake zao wakifika wakati ule. Naomba niseme hivi hivi tuelewane. Msichana akilelewa kwenye familia ambayo baba yake anadharauliwa na kufanywa mateso mbele yake anakuwa akijua ya kwamba mwanaume sio kitu cha kuheshimiwa mtoto kiume akilelewa mahali ambapo mamake ni wa kuchapwa na kutusiwa akifika kuolewa atatriti yule mwanamke kama vile alivyoona mamake akifanywa that is the power of a relationship between a husband and a wife 
Na ninaomba ya kwamba ili tuchunge sense of security kwa wale ambao wanaandika ili tuchunge sense of security and identity for our children we must respect our spouses. Na ningetaka kuambia wababa mlioko kwenye jumba hili zawadi ya maana sana ambayo unaweza pea watoto wako ni kuheshimu na kumpenda mama yao. That is the best gift you can give to your children. Principle number two. I'm almost done. Musiwari, nitajalibu kukimbia. Najua masai meyoyoma kabisa. Principle number two ya kuwalea watoto ambao wana afya ya kiakili moyo na tabia. Expect obedience and don't beg for it. Mambo ya watoto kukuti na kuti wengine, kuti warimu shule, isiwe ni jambo ya tukae chini tuonge. Expect and demand obedience. Do not beg for it. Tunawalea watoto ambao tunawapea uhuru wa kuchagua, either akimaliza kula na sahani, ataichukua ama ataiata pale. Na utakuta ya kwamba kizazi cha watoto tulio nao hata kutii mzazi watana mwalimu na watu wengine even obeying their own parents is quite an uphill task. Kwa wale ambao tunaoandika tuandike number 2 tuiandike hivi when a child is given room for debating obedience they grow to manipulate their parents. Akipewa nafasi ya kujua nitatia ama sitatii wanakuwa katika maisha ya kujua ya kwamba i can rebel my way out ninaweza fanya lolote ili niweze ku, uh, kupata kile ambacho ninacho uh, pata na ndio wanachoma shule ndio wanafanya mambo isiyoeleweka kwa sababu wana uhuru ya kusema nikichoma hii dog watanipea attention nikifanya ni wa, ni wa confuse hata kule nyumbani if i rebel watasikiza moyo wangu na diposa na ni vizuri sijui kama ni ya kusemwa hapa ni ya kusemwa wapi watoto wengine tukienda nao supermarket wakose kile ambacho walikuwa wanataka wanakupea drama so that ukiogopa drama you buy whatever they want Heri urudishe unga na sukali ununue something very unworthy kwa sababu hutaki aibu na hutaki kuaibishwa Wageni wakitembea nyumbani hata akisumbua wageni muache tu ni mtoto. Haki muache. Haka ni kababa. Katajua tu. Don't be too hard on them. Mm, usimchune atararuka. No wonder wanafikisha miaka thelathini na bado wanagonga gongea mamake nyumba ampe chakula. A 30 year old big baby. Aye, aba, aye. Principle number three work with your child or children, not against them. Saidiana na ile kiboko iwe ni ya kumtengeneza Ile kelele iwe ni ya kumsaidia Ili yawe mtoto ambaye Ataheshimika kwenye maisha haya Kwa wale ambao wanaandika Children are disastrous with rejection Ukitaka mtoto wakose haja ya kuishi mkatai Watoto wetu ni wakupendwa Hata bibile inasema hatumchapi tumuwe Hatumchuni dia kufe Hizi mambo ya tabia ni ya kumrejesha. Ni ya kumsaidia awe mtoto ambaye akikumbuka uchungu kuna tabia ambazo atajua hizi sio sawa. Kwa wale ambao ni wasomi wa saikolojia wanatu, huwa wanatufundisha ya kwamba mtoto ili awe na psychological health. Kwa wale ambao wangataka kuelewa hili jambo. For a child to grow psychologically healthy Every child should be hugged seven times a day. Mtoto apewe hug mara saba. Haki ya Mungu kumbuka mara ya mwisho alihagiwa, ashi yaruo. Ikiwa mamake hapewi hug na babake, mama ataitoa wapi ya mtoto? Some women are only hugged. Aya, kuna watoto sitaingilia hapa. So tumesema ya kwamba watoto wetu Awa God anatuwanyesha upendo lakini anatuambia Ukiteda mabaya na mimi ni mungu Nita kutengeneza Nita kurudisha kwenye njia Ambazo zinazofa Principle number four Teach your child the power of 
cause and effect alafu nita tafsili msijali fundisha mtoto ya kwamba upandacho utavuna ukikosa kunitii mimi kama mamako watoto wako pia watakukosea tabia ukikosa kufuata imani ambayo imewekwa dunia itakufunza na diposa msahili akasema ya kwamba mtoto ambaye hatasikia ya mamake dunia hii tayari iweze kumfunza na ni vizuri tufundishe watoto wetu ya kwamba kila hatua unayoichukua iko na mazao yake every decision you make has its own effect na ni vizuri tunakumbusha watoto wetu umechoma dom wewe utachoma uhai wa watu umeiba miambili yangu wewe utaiba milioni moja wakati utakuwa mtu mkubwa the power of cause and effects umeanza kunisema saa hii you've answered back to me how comes how to answer people out there tufundishe watoto wetu ya kwamba every decision has a consequence attached to it principle number five. help and teach your children to find their own place in life fundisha na usaidia mtoto wako kuelewa na kutafuta nafasi yake kwenye maisha haya usibebe watoto na washaa kuwa wakubwa wacha watoto to make their own decisions ziwe sawa ziziwe sawa you cannot you know hawezi zuia watoto wako kuelewa maisha na nimesema ya kwamba wazazi wote tulio nao muwe kama mamangu Ukipata idea na kukumbusha ya kwamba sasa wewe ni mwananchi. Tebea Nairobi na miji mingine ukatafute maisha kama wanaume wengine. Na changamoto tulio nao ya wazazi wa kisasa na nimesema na nitarudia. Utakuta ya kwamba watu wanafikisha miaka 30, miaka 25 na, na bado wanalala nyumba za wazazi wao. Ni vizuri tuwafundishe you are now an adult. Get into the world ukiweza bwana wesu asifiwe ikikushinda ni sawa you can now have your own place in your own life vitori wa mwado agai amen amen patia mwenzako ka high five tuko principle number 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 6 kisingiti cha sita ambacho tunachokihitaji kama wazazi listen more than you lecture Sikiza sana pasipo vile ambavyo unavyo piga kelele. Listen more more than your lecture. Tupatie watoto wetu masikio. Tuwapatie nafsi zetu ili waongee nasi. Na wakati nasema hivyo nasema mama matatu, jambo la kwanza effective communication. Tukae chini ili tuelewane. Waelewe moyo wako, waelewe mapenzi yako ili wanapoyaelewa wajitolee pia ku kuifanya tu listening skills wasasi wetu Mungu atupatie nafasi ya kuitikia kusikia many parents are poor listeners wanasikiza kile ambacho wanataka na kitabu mtoto amalize kuongea watapatiana jibu niko menyagorio kuga nilikuwa tu najua vile ambavyo utakavyosema Mungu atupatie a listening ear na si wasasi wengine hupenda kelele yake eh huh? Mamangu alipiga kelele nikiosha vyombo. Akapiga kelele nisiposha vyombo. Anapiga kelele nikija nyumbani mapema. Akapiga kelele ukitaka wat, watoto wa waige wa, wa, mambo ambayo inayofaa. Basi tujitole ufanya vile. Na mimi huwa nauliza wakati tunapogoma kwenye miji ya Nairobi tukiwa na matawi tukiiba haki yetu, tukilala kwa tawi, tukilala kwa rami. Na mwenye analala kwa lami mwanaume tumbo ni kama ni miba. Watoto wetu wanapotutazama kwenye runinga na baba yao na mama yao wako kwenye mji na matawi wakiiba haki yao wakilala kwa lami. Watoto wanatiambia nini? How will you not do the same madness in high school because they saw their dad and mom doing it in a public street in the capital city of Nairobi. How will you not they do it? Haya hmm? mimi sina jibu tuendelee number two, faith is caught it is not taught kwa wale ambao tunaoandika imani ina mtoto uchukua amani sio kufundishwa na fundishwa 
Diposa kitabu cha medali kinasema ukimlea mtoto katika njia za imani na njia ambazo zinakubarika hata katika uzee wake hata wahitoka. Ukimuelekeza kwenye mambo inayofaa hata katika uzee hata wahitoka. Principle number 9 and the second last one navuka mambo kadhaa kwa sababu ya muda deal with rebellion without mercy. Principle number 9 Usiachilie mtoto akukaidi. Kwa sababu mtoto akikukaidi atakaidi Mungu, atakaidi jamii, atakaidi kanisa, deal with the rebellion kutoka kwa mizizi yake. Na kwa wale ambao ni wasomi wa Biblia, soma Isaia 14. Wakati shetani alikaidi Mungu, hawakukaa mbinguni pamoja. Mungu alimgonga shetani nje. God hates rebellion and therefore every parent should hate rebellion as God hates it. Praise the name of the Lord. Wazazi bwana yetu asifiwe. Mungu in fact if you read second Samuel 15, Mungu anasema ya kwamba dhambi ya kukaidi ni kama ya uchawi. God takes rebellion as witchcraft. Na kwa hivyo unapoatilia mtoto wa kukaidi unamtuma na kutupia mikono unamwambia niletee fulani anakutupia mabega na anaenda if you don't deal with that rebellion it will come bouncing to you na mazao ambayo hautaiweza principle number 10 and the last one give your children some freedom but control it ni vizuri wakati mwingine wanapewa ka, 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 ka uhuru kidogo uhuru wa kujiamulia uhuru wa kuchukua hatua kadhaa lakini ule uhuru uweze kutazamwa na kuangaliwa angalia luka 15 kuna baba alipatia mtoto uhuru wa kufanya lolote mtoto anaambia baba nipatie mali yangu babake angemwambia hapana gojea wakekaa chini waongee na huyu mtoto kwa sababu ya baba kupenda uhuru akampatia mtoto wake wa kiume mali biblia inasema nini wasomi alienda akamwaga ile mali na 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 ukahaba na pombe na mateso mengine wakati mtoto alikuwa anarudi nyumbani uhuru ulikuwa umemfanya kama nguruwe na ninaambia wazazi tulio nao kwenye kizazi hiki uhuru unafaa lakini uhuru ambao hauna kuangaliwa ni uhuru ambao humtesa na kuharibu watoto tulio nao the future of a generation is determined by how children are parenting kesho ya taifa ni vile watoto wanavyolelewa kesho ya kanisa la isli ni vile ambavyo tutalea watoto wetu tukiwalea na njia za kiungu tukiwalea na njia zilizo kubarika wakifanyika watu wakubwa mizizi yao itawakumbusha pale tukiwaachilia kujitawala na kufanya lolote even when they become of age tutalia kwa sababu ya begu tulio ipanda. Kwa wale ambao ni wasikizaji wa Gokena tupatane jioni, ni mimi huletanga ibada ya jioni, tupatane pale tuendelee na ibada. I love you all. Jesus loves you the most.